Hello and welcome to another IC3D tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to go through everything about the lighting editor. We're going to go through creating lights, moving them around the scene, and figuring out how on earth we can use this tool. So my example model is in the center of my screen here. It's just a quick little SU pouch that we created in another previous tutorial. Now the first thing we want to do is we're going to go open the lighting editor and that's going to be over in window and that's lighting editor right around uh, should be the fourth one down. Now once you've got that open again this window can be snapped around so you can have this free floating or anywhere you really want it. Now what I'm going to do and what I like to set up my scene as I like to have all three of my views on my OpenGL to the ray tracing and even having the lighting editor itself over on the right side as well. So once you're inside of the lighting editor, what I'm going to be using as our default is just the IC3D underscore studio. That's just the, uh, again, the basic default, uh, the basic default lighting ray. Now, once you're here, if you want to select any previous rig that you've created, just go ahead and select that. And as you can see, you've got a list. Uh, now your list is gonna be much smaller than mine, but as you create lighting rigs, you can save them and this list will grow slowly but surely. Now, once you're uh, happy with a lighting rig, or in my case, I'm going to be creating a new rig, and we're gonna be doing that together. And that's this button right here. So the new lighting rig is, uh, as you can see, if you've got the update interactively down here at the uh, bottom, you're gonna see that the uh, rig is going to immediately update and both views should be now pretty dark. Now the OpenGL view has slightly, uh, slightly more ambient light to it, but the ray tracer will more or less reflect exactly what the lighting editor shows. So now for the first lighting rig, I'm just going to be creating my own. Now, of course, we can import them, but let's take a look at creation first. So what I like to do is before even adding in a central light, I like to add my background lights. So the background lights being try to match the uh, kind of the darkest light that you'd like in the scene. In this case, you've got options from the background color, spherical image, which is our import options or a 2D image, another version of the uh, spherical image import. Now we're just gonna be focusing in on the background color for right now because the spherical image and 2D image are gonna pretty much handle everything uh, in terms of the lights for us. So let's just go ahead and take a look at uh, style down here and we can start with a simple blank color. Now, if we're in black ground color, we can double click this color. The color should be black by default and that should be then reflected on the uh, actual scene. Now, double clicking this color box will open up our color selecting. Uh, we can move this up gradient wise, maybe just make it a gray background like so. And as you can see, that'll bring some ambient light to the model. Now, again, background color, uh, I more or less use this as the ambient light. So sometimes you want a nice gradation to it. So you can use the gradation, which is vertical or horizontal left and right. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use vertical gradation as that gives actually a pretty nice kind of overview and ambient light to my model so we can add shinier or brighter lights to the, uh, the scene using our light category options. So from here, if we wanted to though add any more additional colors, just go ahead and double click any bar down here. So at any point, add one right here and then double click again that little node to then change that color and then you can actually vary this, as you can see, if you select a pretty uh, bright color, that color will wash out everything. But that will vary the lights for you. So you can play around with this, you know, maybe a little less, maybe a little more. And then as you can see, we can start cutting down on that, uh, that color. If you don't want any of them, you just kind of grab them and drag them off, and that'll just make them kind of poof. And now from there, once you're happy with your background, now I'm just gonna stick with our gradient background, I'm gonna head over to our lights category. Now, this is where we're going to explain a little bit about how the lighting editor works and what side is the front. Um, so the front side of our lighting editor is actually on the cut, so this middle part. And I'm gonna explain that using a light. 
So let's go ahead and jump into our lights and just hit that little plus button. There we are. And by default, this light is in the center of our lighting rig, but this center is the back side. So if uh, you're kind of picturing this, this is showing up. And if actually you can kind of see this on here on the ray tracing, not the OpenGL shadows. Because remember, the OpenGL shadows are specific to whatever you choose. Um, so you can create custom shadows. But with a ray tracer, it's all dependent on the lighting rig itself. And as you can see, that shadow is now being cast from the backside. So the bright light tells us if I hit F to view the front, that light is now behind my object. So alternatively, if I grab this in, move it all the way, and uh, basically cut the light in half, that light now is shining on the front of my scene. Yeah, you can actually see that very subtly right there. And again, if we look at the top, now the shadow is pushing back like that. So a popular way of doing this is three-point lighting. So I'm just going to set this up for a quick three-point lighting, which is a nice lighting. So uh, to grab and move any of these, by the way, is just grab the little dot in the middle. You can kind of just shift them around. Now, you may not like moving them that way, so if you do like, you know, just use sliders instead, you can use the position box down here, and that will actually just scoot the light up and down like there. And as long as you've got the, uh, again, update interactively, everything's going to update real time. Uh, I always have that checked on just because it's super helpful to know where that light's actually playing around. <clears throat> Excellent. So from here, what we're going to do is let's just take this light and adjust it to the center. So this is going to be my background light. So I'm just getting uh, kind of just maybe a little off center. So since we're going to try for that three point lighting, as you can see, if I look up again, you should be able to see a subtle shadow coming from a direction. Uh, but I'm kind of trying to beam this towards the uh, kind of kind of back right, back left. So in this case, I'm going to add that light in, and then by default, it is going to be circular. So I'm going to change that over to a rectangular light, and then I can actually make that a taller light and a larger light. So the angle will actually make the light larger altogether. And then from there, if I like this light, so that's not too bad, I can actually then duplicate that. And you can see that's light copy, and then you can just grab that again. And then I'm going to move that again to the other side. And you're going to then be able to see the two reflections coming in from the left and the right. And that should look good. There we go. So from here, now we can scroll down a little bit and we can do the same kind of styling with the gradation as we did with our background. Now, in this case, we do have the benefit of the radial option. So that just adds the uh, kind of right in the middle there. Uh, we're going to stick with just color for today. but one other thing to note is the opacity is set by 75% by default. So if we wanted to increase this, uh, again, just remember if you're curious why your lights aren't so bright, it is set to 75%. So then you just want to switch over to the other light. In this case, uh, whatever light you have selected should have a green dot over it, not so uh, with the orange. And then just increase the opacity. That's going to brighten up those lights so we can really start to see them, much like the OpenGL view here. Now, from here, we're going to want to brighten up the front of our model. So to do this, again, all we have to do is go into our scene lights. And I'm not going to use the same light. I'm going to actually create a new custom light and then just grab that all the way to the center right here. And now we should be able to see that light there. So what I like to do once the light's here is we can just adjust it a little bit more. Actually, I kind of want to send it over here. And now if you're having problems seeing where it is and you kind of don't want to wait for it to uh, kind of quickly uh, render out like I've got it going, what I like to do is actually just increase the opacity and then increase the power as well. The power is going to really make it a bright spotlight. And if then you're having additional problems seeing where that spotlight is, I've also made it just a funky color. So then you can just really see, oh, okay, that's exactly where it's hitting. Um, but again, that's just uh, some tips and tricks that I've used in the past. So from here, um, I'm pretty happy with that light. So I'm going to drop the power 
but I am going to angle it a little higher, so this is just going to be an overall brighter light in the front, like so. Now, of course, with this being said, this is a very simple example of a lighting rig. You can get very complicated with this by adding additional lights and uh, more and more lights. So a popular light uh, kind of feature is very tall and skinny light. So if you make a very large middle and then of course just make it really tall, you're going to see that that creates a super nice stripe. And you can take this and uh, you can then position this anywhere in the front of the model. And uh, sometimes the OpenGL view is actually really nice to see where that's hitting as well. So, so you can see that uh, it's right there. And that's a nice easy way of getting a kind of a single streak or multiple streaks. Now, with this being said, this is a way of creating lights. We can compound lights over and over, creating additional background lights, moving lights above, creating all sorts of different gradients and colors to create a wide range of different types of lights. Uh, so as you can see, again, I've got a lot of different lights here that uh, I've been playing around with for quite some time. And if I just open up, let's just grab like lighting one. And as you can see, each light will vary in uh, vastly different. Uh, now that is because also there is something at the bottom here. So if we uh, once we're happy with all of those lights, if you look at the color and effects down here is really where um, this is why it's kind of getting blown out. So down here in color and effects, we have the contrast, brightness, and saturation. These are very touchy, so we want to be very careful increasing any of these. As, as you can see, to make it look like very, you know, honestly, it looks like pop art. So it could make it look like pop art, man. Now, if that's what you're going for, that's definitely perfect. Uh, but of course, with what I'd like to do is a little blur here. And as I can see, um, this lighting rig is made up of a lot of different grays and blacks. So let's go ahead and just jump to another one as just a quick other example. So here's an example of a studio one. We'll use Studio 6. And then this is more of a traditional uh, kind of default rig. And this has, again, a quite a nice example of gradients and a nice example of a just wide range of different lights. Now, with this, once you're happy with your contrast, brightness, and saturation, we can head over to our blur and RT dynamic range. So blur is kind of what you think it's going to be. If your lights are a little too uh, kind of crisp on the edges, you can blur those up. And now there's really no distinction between the lights. Now, of course, with objects, it'll make it look much softer. Uh, so just, you know, depending on what you're kind of going for, be careful with your blur. A little bit of blur can add a nice effect. But if you're really looking for the uh, kind of nice reflections or crisp reflections, I'd keep that blur down. Now, with our T dynamic range, what this is going to do is increase the color. It's basically a kind of a saturation booster, but it's going to increase the dynamic range of the color. So as I can example, if you increase it, as you can see, your vibrancy will increase and things are just going to get a bit more white, a bit more orange, and just kind of saturate up. Now, with that being said, saturation is its own slider. So you got to be careful with the saturation as well. Uh, but again, since you have a black and white image, it doesn't really add too much to the lighting rig. So um, RT dynamic range and saturation are really helpful when you've got a lot of color in your rig or a lot of subtlety. And that actually brings me to my next point. Um, what we're going to be talking about next is, remember that option we looked at in the background? That spherical image and 2D image? These two guys um, are my go-to for when I don't want to create my own lighting rig. So if you're um, more or so under the business of grabbing images, using backgrounds, and using what's called an HDRI image, this is the option for you. Now this is going to completely take out the need for creation of a lighting rig, and this is going to import in a real kind of map that's used to then um, use it called what's called image-based lighting. So let's go ahead and just take a look at how we use it. I'm going to turn on that spherical image option. That's going to turn that option on. Now, real quick, though, I just want to create a new rig just like that. And then let's do that once more. 
Now, the images we're looking for are HDR, EXR, HDRI, so just HDRI as well, I've seen those uh, in the past, and then PNG and JPEG. So PNG and JPEG can be used as just flat images, so if you do need to import those in, you can use that. Now, the 2D image importer will do that just the same, but just to show you that uh, you can import from in here. I'm going to go ahead and grab my HDRI image. You can download these from a multitude of different places. Um, I roughly shoot for around 2K when downloading in my image range, uh, but of course any higher than that is really only necessary if you're using it as a background, but I usually aim for 2K. That gives me a perfect solid look. So grab that HDR image and go ahead and hit open. That's going to then import in the image. And as you can see, I've got this uh, kind of old industrial looking uh, kind of factory. And what we're going to do with this is uh, actually, this looks pretty good by default. Now, I do want to go into my dynamic graph. Now, I do want to go into my dynamic range and just make sure that, uh, again, it's set to where I'd like to see it, but the more dynamic range, the more color and contrast and things you'll see inside of that image there. So, here we go. And then from here, we can actually use that again, because that's our background. So we could then build what's on top of this. And then you'll be able to actually see those on your image. So using a combination of both of these, a nice HDRI image or a nice lighting rig, you can actually create a lot of different variation in your image and it can really make or break your render. So when it comes time to using lighting, play around with the lighting rig, get familiar with your wide angles, vertical options, color styles, and really create some cool custom rigs that are going to be unique to what uh, your product should be. One last thing before we uh, close, I do want to show you the lock lighting rotation to camera option. So this is a cool option for in case you want the, uh, so this, <clears throat> in case you want consistency in your image. What I mean by that is if I wanted this spot, this uh, spot here that I created, this white light in the front of my shot, no matter if I'm looking at the front or the back, so as you can see, that has adjusted to uh, two different bluish kind of uh, views here. So if I wanted the front spot to be consistent with the back on every render, this is what the lock lighting rotation, the camera button will do. If I turn this on and then say go to the back, you're going to see that that spot color that we added here, that spotlight is still on the same exact spot as it was in the front. So this is just a great option for keeping consistency and uh, again, just keeping consistent in every render. Thank you so much for joining me for this IC3D tutorial. I'm Adam Chop, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Now, don't forget to hit the uh, bell icon that will notify you guys if I get any more videos out here. And I do try to update once or twice a week. So if there's any good uh, tutorials out there, and they may be helpful for you, so be sure to hit that bell and uh, do subscribe if you're not part of the team. Thanks so much.